Join us Sunday, September 29, 10.45 a.m. Master Ceremony Minister, Derek Carroll Guest Speakers Kingdom Truth Global, Ministries Pastor, Harold Gilliam Cedar Grove Tabernacle Praise, Elder, Jock Carter Be our special guest Well, good morning everyone Welcome to a new beginning, Tri Church of Faith. I trust you had a blessed week. Ready to hear the word for today. This morning we're going to open up with scripture from Olivia Scales. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Psalm 149. Psalm 139. This is a song that I wrote, uh, give me this week, and I just want to share it with you this morning. He is the one who watches over me. Thank you for that, Olivia. You did good. I 
The Father, this morning we praise you, Lord. We give you glory in your house, Lord. We thank you for the anointing that you have placed on this morning. We ask you to bless our pastor, Lord, in a mighty way. Bless his mind. Bless everything that he do. And Lord, we give you glory this morning. We plead the blood of Jesus over our, over our nation, Father, in the name of Jesus. We come against any kind of terrorist attack, any kind of cyber attack, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. We praise you, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over this property this morning, Lord. We come, Lord, with the, to get in your presence, to give you glory and exalt your holy name. Father, we praise you and give you, Lord. Thank you for the word this morning, Lord. I thank you for everyone under my voice this morning to hear this word, Lord, that you give them a revelation of what you're saying to them, Lord. Lord, that you open doors, supernatural things take place in their life, Father. Thank you, Lord. We praise you this morning. And Lord, we give you glory. And we praise you for this opportunity to bring forth your word this morning, Lord. Stir up our hearts to receive what you're saying to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's give God a praise in the house this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Well, this morning we're just going to continue on what we had talked about last week. Uh, we talked about breakthrough. So this will just be a continuation of breakthrough, part, part two. And our main scripture last week was 1 Corinthians. It was 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Chapter 16, excuse me, verse 9. It says, for a great door. In other words, a breakthrough is going to come in your way. A great door and effectual is opening to you. And this part, I could have left it out as far as I'm concerned. And there are many others. So in other words, there's going to be some trouble. Something's going to happen. You know, somebody trying to stop you with the Lord is blessing you with. All kind of crazy stuff. But breakthrough. He said, a great door is open for you. So what I want to do this morning, I want to start out with the book of Malachi, uh, chapter 3, verse 10, King James Version. It's a familiar scripture to all of us if you've been serving the Lord for a while. And it says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now hereworth, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And, and listen, that's 11 verse 8, and I will rebuke the devour for your sake. Wow, that may be those adversaries coming through, you know, he's going to rebuke the devour for your sake. But you know, a lot of people today have problems dealing with that, Christians too, that say, well, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. I, I ain't got to pay no tax. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you. I ain't going to argue with you. But let's go over to the New Testament then. In the New Testament, out of the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38, King James Version, he said, give. Oh, wait a minute. Give. There's no restrictions on it. Give. That could be 10%. That could be 20%. That could be gifts to somebody in the grocery store, somebody in need. That's, he said, give. So you might not like Malachi. That's just 10%. But now we're talking in the New Testament. He said, give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure that you met, whether it shall be measured to you again. Wow. He said, give. This is, this is the way God's kingdom is. Well, we, you know, if you're a Christian, I suggest you give. Just, just do what he tell you to do. You know, there's a, we have a problem with giving sometimes. And uh, Jesus is saying, give. Give to help others. Give. There's a story in the Bible when uh, Jesus and Mary went to a wedding. And when they got to the wedding, how I many you know they run out of wine? And a lot of times, who, you know, this is your wedding. That's like, you don't want that to happen. So Mary, which is Jesus' mother, she looked over at him and said, like, do something. And he was like, Mama, oh, ain't my time yet. But she, she looked at the servants and she told the servants, she said, just do what he tell you to do. Just do what he tell you to do. So he told them to fill the pot of water, pots with water. And they began to fill the pots with water. And guess what happened? A breakthrough came. A miracle, miracle happened. He filled those pots with water and they began to start serving. Guess what happened? When they pour those pots, turn into wine. Just doing what the Lord told me to do. 
and all he's telling us to do is just give. Just give, just be obedient. So what I wanna do is do a little demonstration for you this morning. I'm gonna come down for a few minutes. And uh, this represents, you know, he said, give and it'll come back into you. Wow. Give and it'll come back to you. That's what the word says. It's not my word. He said, give and it'll come back to you. But Lord, I, I've been tithing for three months and I ain't seen a thing happen, not, not nothing. He said, give, just do what he tell you to do. Give and it'll come back to you. Give and it'll come back to you. Lord, it's been a whole year, I'm almost going on two. I ain't seen no results. He said, just give and it come back to you. That's all he told you to do. Just give and it come back to you. What'd you say, Lord? Uh, do I have a house to live in? Yeah. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Thank you, Lord. I got someone lay my head. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Lord, I got a family. Thank you, Lord, I got a, 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 a car to drive around. Thank you, Lord, for my health. See, all he wants you to do is just give, but he wants your heart. Are you giving to see what you can get back? Or are you giving because you love the Lord? Now listen, what, what man wants to get married and he gets married? Honey, did you marry me because of all the money I got because what, what I, I got to give you? He don't want to, he don't want to hear that. He wants to say, she's going to say, honey, I love you. Not because of all the money you got. I love you because of you and my heart. You got my heart. And that's all God wants to do. See, you may not see no results in the beginning when you give, and it, but it's coming back to you. You got somewhere to live at. You giving. You got a job, ain't you? You giving. You got your health, ain't you? You giving. Your family doing good. You, hey, he's, he's doing some things behind the scene that you may not know, but it's still working. It's still working. But see, you got to be consistent with it. And you gotta, he, he wants to see your heart. That's the main thing. I remember when he told me one day, he said, I thought we done lost that thing. He said, now I know that you love me. I thought, oh, Lord Jesus. But see, all he wants to do is see your heart. Give, and she'll be giving to you. Give, he's taking care of you. You got food on your table, ain't you? Right, you got, got food. Give, but see, all of a sudden, after the consistency, I don't know how long it's taking because I don't know when you're gonna give me your heart. Some people, it's like, oh, I'm, I don't want to give this this morning up. Give, but all of a sudden the consistency. Here comes good measure. Woo, woo, press down, woo, shaking together, woo, running over. And it's like, it's more than enough, more than enough. And then what happened, you get, you get so you can give away now. You, you, can, you can bless somebody else. That's all he wants you to do. He just wants your heart. So, you know, I hope you understood that demonstration because give and it'll come back to you. And all of a sudden the doors just open up. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know who it's coming from. You just know it's coming because that's what the words say. And God is faithful to his word. I'm going to go back up here. So now you got all these balls and this represents money and things and stuff. Now you can share this with somebody else and be a blessing. And Lord knows what other door he's going to open for you. So, how I many know that God, if we just do what the Lord say do, we don't know where he might take us to. We don't know. Uh, Sometimes James and I, we tell people, we be out somewhere, we might just start up a conversation. That's my husband, not me. And he might begin to tell some things that we went through. And they'll look at us like, I don't believe y'all went through all that. Why they don't believe we went through that? Because look, they looking at us now. We, we got a place to live. We, we got, we driving cars. They looking at the natural. So they didn't see what we went through behind the scene. And it, it reminds me of the story in the Bible about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, they made up their decision. They made the decision. Okay, you got to make a decision sometimes to get tired and give. They made a decision. We're going to serve our God. That we're not going to serve this false God. And King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he's like, wait a minute. You, 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 
You're not going to bow down at my God? So no, they didn't. They, st they stood by what they believed in. So you know what? He said, okay. He stuck them in the furnace. Stuck them in the furnace, a fire. Now, now sometimes when I'm cooking, open my stove, I can't hardly stand the heat coming from that. They said they turned it up seven times hotter, okay? Put them in there. But guess what, y'all? Guess what? Guess what? The king looked over at King Nama, King looked and he thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I thought we put three men in there. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. That's four. <laughs> Guess who the fourth one was? It was God. He was there to protect them, to guide them. And I tell people when people when they look at us and think, well, y'all don't look like y'all been through nothing. They listen, it's the, the Bible says. The hair didn't get burnt, their body didn't get burnt, and guess what? They didn't even, listen, they didn't even smell like smoke. Look, how many know somebody in the neighborhood just burn some trash? Gosh, if you be out there, it started getting on you. They didn't even smell like smoke. So you look at my life, and you, you're like, I don't believe it. Well, we, when we was in the fire, we wasn't by ourselves. When we was in the trial, we wasn't by ourselves. It was me, my son, my, my husband. That's three of us. But there was a four of them with us. His name is Jesus. Jesus was with us. That's why you look at us and say, I, I don't, well, we don't smell like smoke. We don't smell like we've been through a trial, but in the name of Jesus, I know it went through the trial because I was in it. But we come out, oh, hallelujah, I learned so much. I learned to trust the Lord simply by doing what thus said the Lord, by giving, just giving, and trusting this word, giving him my heart. Yeah. So you know today, you think, oh, that's, that's a hard thing to do. Well, you have to trust the Lord. See, I learned, you learn, there's a scripture that says, let me see if I can find it right quick. I learned, die to flesh first of all you gotta die you gotta die to pride and I remember telling the Lord you know first of all I like this scripture Isaiah chapter 6 1 verse 7 King James Version it says for your shame you shall receive double and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion therefore in their land they shall possess the double everlasting joy shall be unto them alright now first of all Talked about losing everything. When we got married, when we moved to Oak Ridge, thought I was gonna be there the rest of my life. But it didn't happen that way. We lost everything, then we went and moved in with the Scaleses in Kernersville. I'm giving, I'm giving, and it's coming back to me. I had a place to lay my head. I didn't have to get out a sign on the side of the street and say, will you help me please? We done lost everything. I never got a sign out. I never, you know, I just went to the Lord and God opened doors. Simply by us, just a bit. I gave him when he didn't have to give. And then from there, he opened a door. He said, move back to the stove. So why? I did not, I'm gonna tell you right now, I did not wanna move back to the stove still. First of all, that's where I grew up at. The whole neighborhood probably know what we went through. And then one day I'm praying, he said, he said everybody's talking about you from 150 mile radius. I said, oh Lord, thank you. That's a good thing to tell me. Thank you, thank you, Lord. I, oh, I really like that. And you want me to move back to Stone Step? Yes, move back to Stone Step. But the door was open. What do you do? Do you go through the door or do you just sit back, you know? But the door was open. Sometimes it don't come the way you think it's gonna come, but go through the door and accept it. And I was shamed. I'm gonna tell you right now, I was shamed. I didn't want to go to the grocery store. I didn't want to go to the bank. I said, Lord, I'm shamed. He said, what? why are you shamed? You have nothing to be ashamed about because you did what I said do. Just do what the Lord said do, okay? And but God began, see, he didn't say I'll give you double for your trouble. He said double for your shame, shame, your shame. I was shamed. But God began, as we stood with the Lord, we, we stayed with it. He began to give us breakthrough after breakthrough. Opening doors, opening doors after another. Opening doors, opening doors. And when we, we got the ready to move to the location where I am now, I thought, Lord have mercy. I'm praying one morning, I said, Lord, I know you told us to do this, you told us to build this house, but Lord, 
Where's the money coming from? I need curtains. You know, a woman got a list. I need curtains. I need blinds. I need furniture. I need all this stuff. Lord, where's it going to come from? But God began to start opening doors. And like I said, you got to get rid of pride. People start giving us money, things, stuff. I mean, I mean, listen, I was overwhelmed at what God had did. I told my husband the other day, I said, people gave us so much, I said, I thought, well, you know, we got so much stuff. Maybe I should, maybe I should open a little store, a little thrift store and to sell some of this stuff. But, you know, we just gave away. But see, in the process of giving, we got stuff back. But see, you gotta realize when I was in the wilderness, I gave stuff. We gave furniture away. We bought TVs and stuff. So all this stuff started coming back. And I said, Lord, I thank you that you opened doors for me. So don't be discouraged this morning. Just stay with it. I, I'm gonna live a witness. God open doors for you. Yeah, and this is a scripture that God has taught me. Am I living in the biggest mansion on the side of the road? No. Am I driving the finest car? No. No. But it says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 12, out of the Living Bible. Not that I ever, this is Paul talking, not that I ever in need, for I have learned to get along happily, whether I have much or little. I know how to live with almost nothing uh, with everything. I have learned the secret of contentment in every situation, whether it be a full stomach, look, full stomach or hunger, plenty I want. I, that was me. But I've learned to be content. I'm so satisfied now. And sometimes I feel God pushing me and it's like, I'm just in, you know, content. I don't want to, I don't want to open a door and go through some more adversaries, new level, new devil. But I've learned to be content when I didn't have nothing and when I have something. And that's all God wants. He wants your heart. He wants you to, to serve him like you love him. And God is so faithful. He is so loving. Uh, it, you know, people take God for granted. But he wakes us up every morning. He puts prayer. We, we can see, we can hear, we got healthy bodies. and But because Little things go wrong, we, we get upset, and, and he's there watching. So I ask you today, what are you sowing today? Are you sowing hatred, unforgiveness, you know, no mercy? Or are you showing love, mercy? You know, listen, the scripture says in Galatians chapter six, verse seven through nine, it says, be not deceived. God is not marred, for whatsoever men sow, that shall he also reap. For he that sow to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sow to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And this is the part we, we like. And let us not go weary, he said. God said, I see you giving. I see what you've been doing. I see. He said, but let us not go weary. And we're doing. For in due season, when is I don't know. That's between you and the Lord. He knows your heart. I don't know your heart. You can tell me anything. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. If you don't faint, you will see the glory of God. You will see God open doors for you like you've never seen before. You're going to reap what you sow. I, 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 that's, that's bad to say, but it happened. If you bit them, well, bitterness is going to come back to you. If you can't forgive the battle, well, that's... Am I going to forgive you? You don't want to show no love? <laughs> It'd be a lot of happy marriages if we could show more love to our spouses. But anyway, I'm not going to get into this another topic. But share this last story and I'm going to let Pastor have it. We were on vacation and we was uh, going to Florida, Disneyland. See, my son maybe was, hmm, he wasn't, I know he didn't have his license, but he was taller than us, so he maybe made 15, I don't know. He was on vacation, going to Florida, going to Disneyland. It wasn't during the pandemic, so it was crowded, it was hot. Talking about showing compassion, talking about showing kindness, and uh, we standing in line, and the line was so long, so long. Finally, we get to the line with the little sign, and you know, I'm thinking maybe 30 minutes wait. It said an hour and 30 minutes wait. I thought, huh? Oh. 
but everybody else is standing there now, so we wanted to ride back to the future. So now we at the little sign, and you know, it, it, it starts little, like a little circle, like, you know. You, and uh, we got to the end, and there was a piece of paper in the parking lot, you know, on the ground. And this young man was sweeping the parking lot. That was his job. And James just kindly kicked it to him. And he looked at James like, what mean of this? Because I'm sure he felt shame. See, sometimes we make people feel shame because of the job they got. But that was his job. And that's all he could do right now. So he was cleaning the parking lot, sweeping it. And James just kicked the paper over to him. So when we got down to the next loop, he was down there. And he got the gate and he opened it and he said, follow me. And we all three looked at each other like, what mean it is? Now we, we just got into the loop, so we got a good hour wait. So we followed him. Went on up the back, went up some steps. He said, go in there and stand right there. And y'all, when they opened the door, we were the next one to ride back to the future. James showed kindness. In return, he got kindness. It would be a better place if we could just show some kindness, show some love, and God would open doors for you like you've never seen before. I'm gonna let this go. Come on up, Pastor, and I'm gonna let you have this. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> May the Lord bless my mind today. May the Lord bless my mind today. You know, you know some powerful things my wife was saying here is really interesting. Praise God, you know. And even if we was continuation that she's saying from last Sunday, just a few minutes here, I'm going to share this and, and reiterate on some things that even that she was saying here, okay. Back in the, uh, in the script out of 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, and, and verse 9, again, the Apostle Paul was saying to the church in Corinth, he says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries, many adversaries. Now, if you don't understand what's happening after you have gotten born again, and, and if you are a new Christian, baby Christian in Christ, and you know, you weren't, I heard somebody put it like this, you weren't dabbles in this loaded. <coughs> you just loaded here. Yeah, I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm going down, I'm going to rebuke some demons, and I'm going to do it. Listen, <laughs> you're not ready for some things, okay? But you're saved. But after a period of time, you grow and mature in God, like that Paul say, then here come a door will open for you. If you stay, God know your heart, okay? He know when you're ready. You have to wait, even on your ministry. The Bible said you have to wait on your ministry, okay? But when that door opens, you, you're thinking that the door just opened and you can just walk right through it. Listen, let me read again. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. And adversaries is an enemy to you. Many. It'll come against you. You set out to do something, I'm going to do this, and all of a sudden it's like, what in the world happened? Many adversaries. Satan don't want you to go forward. He don't want you to go forward. Remember, I had said to you the other Sunday, that Satan will not lay down. He will attack. Why in the world will he attack? Well, the scripture says out of the very, is again, the shirt of the Mark, the fourth chapter, and in 17, let me pull over there right quick. Mark, Mark, Luke, excuse me, I got, need some room up here. Almost. <laughs> Mark, Luke, yeah, Mark, the fourth chapter and 17b, he said it like this. When afflictions or persecution arise it, for the word's sake, afflictions and persecutions are coming to you. You are born again Christian now, all right? You come, I want to do the will of God, okay? It will arise, all of a sudden things, that, like, what is this trouble around me? What is going on? The word's sake, Satan coming after the word, trying to keep it from penetrating, from, from, from uh, lodging in your heart. He, he don't want it to produce for you. Yeah. Satan do not want the word in you, so he will come 
Immediately, God says, you got the word in, you heard the word, you got all excited. So lots of times before you even get out of a, a service that's been preached, Satan is already working. He's already working on you. Now what you gonna do? Now look at this. Go ahead and do this. And now you try to get your, you get your, the, the, the parents try to get them in strife. The kids try to get them in strife. For the, for the word's sake, immediately. Now, if you don't know that, all of a sudden, then you want to retaliate back, and you done got mad, and Satan is like, got him. That's what he done. That's what he do. He is a persistent cuss. He is a liar. He is a father of all lies. All right, so <clears throat> now, breakthrough. You're looking for breakthrough. You're waiting on breakthrough. Oh, breakthrough. Breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough. Oh, I'm just so excited. I'm breakthrough. Okay. Now, <laughs> for the word's sake, keep that in your mind. For the word's sake, immediately Satan coming. Amen. All right. Now, you've been, you want to do the will of God. You've been doing what he's saying do. And it's like, you know, it is really important to come together with a company of believers. God says not to forsake yourself and assemble together as the amount of some do, okay? If, if, if you're not assembling together, if something happens, oh, you might, be, you might be reading the word, you might be listening to the word, whatever, but something happens when a body of believers to come together. And the scripture says that where there's unity, there's strength. You, as we come together as one, Unity as in one is strength. You encourage and you listen to somebody else and you see their life, how they have uh, made it through the opposition of Satan. And they're like, then their testimony or their life, it will encourage you. It's something about just a body of believers. It is wonderful to come together. Okay? And that is, that is so important. But here he's saying that, Again, as she was speaking about the Malachi, was talking about in the Old Testament, we realize, okay, she was saying, it, the Malachi says that bring all the tide in to the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And God's saying this, and, and, and you can prove him. That's one of the few times God said, you can prove me with this. You can prove me. Hurry up, well, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven, I'm opening up to you, you're going to see it. Oh, look. Look through that window. Lo, I open the windows. I'm opening them up. Now I can go. Whoa, look, I can, he can throw out some blessings. Throw out increase for you. Windows of heaven. He said, I pour out a blessing. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. That's telling me that no lack. More than enough. You will be taken care of. But now you got to do what he says. You got to be obedient, okay? You're going to have to be obedient. <clears throat> now, uh, in, in the Luke the 11th chapter, hang on, go back again. I got scripture all over the place here, like I said. Yeah. Excuse me while I turn here. Okay. That's a little, Luke, the 11th chapter, okay. Jesus himself in verse 42, he says here concerning the, the Pharisees, he says, but woe unto you, Pharisees, for you tied, they give a tenth, mint, you tied mint and rue and all manner of herbs. They tied them, okay? And you pass over judgment and the love of God. And that is what Jesus says. Now, they're tithing, okay? They're little things they're doing. They're doing all this. We should do it. You know, my wife was talking about you in the Old Testament about giving a lot of people hell says, well, that was in the Old Testament, you tied. But listen to what Jesus said. He telling the Pharisees, you tied, mint, rue, and, and all this, he said, and all manner of herbs, you tied in these things, he said, and you pass over judgment and the love of God. All right, kind of out of order, but listen to what he says. He says, but these, your tithe, your mint, your root. He said, you ought to have done. Yeah, you ought to have tied it. He said, and not to leave the other undone. So he wants us to tithe, give, and to walk in love too, and to forgive. All right. He said, if you do these things, he said, it give God a chance to bless you. 
we're looking at giving a lot of times you looked at it in my natural carnal mind years ago we're looking at I always been a tatter uh, since I've been working but there was God was uh, asking me to increase and, and I was like well I don't understand I, I, I look at it as a loss because you look at other people and they got this they got that Lord I want that see my flesh was running high you were running high, okay? But God said, I want you to love me with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, your might, your strength. And he says in Matthew 6 and 33, he says, seek first me. These things that you were looking for, he said, I will add them unto you. He said, so seek God first, the kingdom of God. And Amplified says that it was Luke 6 and 33. He says, God's way of doing things. Seek first God's way of doing things. He said, then I'm going to add these other things to you. You'll be taken care of. You know what? We have found it to be so. We have found it to be so in my household. Just doing it God's way. And there are times that look, you're persecuted. It looked like it's not working. It really do. Look, you're being proved. You're being tested. Do you really love God? You really going to go do this thing? Let me see. You know, God's watching. He see everything. He, everything we do, he know. He know our intention, the very intention of our heart. He knows. But because you love him, and he said, putting him first, and there are some things, oh, I could have did this, and I could have did that, but like, Lord, I, I let that go because I, I, I love you, and I want to do what you say. He knows. He see it. You will be rewarded for that. <clears throat> he hadn't forgot about that. You will be rewarded with So stay faithful to it. Stay faithful to it. In con somebody put it like the inconsistency lies the power. It looked like it's not working. It looked like you might go on years. <laughs> oh, I know what I'm talking about. It looked like, Lord, but it's working. Because he said this. Now, 11, Hebrews 11, the chapter verse, uh, the first, he said, now faith is. The first chapter there. He said, now faith is. Faith is now. It is substance of things that have been hoped for and to become evidence of things not seen. Now it's like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what I'm doing. Lord, I'm trusting you. That's faith. I'm believing what you said, and I'm going to do what you said do, and you start doing it, and you activate it by not being just heroes of your word. You might read the word, but now you've got to apply the word to your life, all right? Okay? So breakthrough can come. So you stand with him and doing the things he tell you. Now, all of a sudden, here come breakthrough. It's like, okay, breakthrough is coming. However, as I said to you before, when breakthrough come, don't think it's just like you can lay back now and just lay on my couch and eat me or get me a dozen of Krispy Kreme donuts. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to eat and I'm going to chill out, man. Give me a gallon of ice cream and oh, look at that. And I'm going to look at the three stooges. And here we go. We're going to say, look, breakthrough, look, listen, breakthrough is coming. Yes, it's coming, but now through it, many adversaries. All of a sudden, what in the world is going on? The kids raising sand back into there, fighting one another like what? Then you get to holler. Ah, what's happening? Now here come chaos. And like what? Lord, I thought breakthrough is coming. Something breaking, but it's not that. See, you got to understand what's happening, what's going on. It's coming for the word's sake. Satan sees that breakthrough is coming, a better day, a better way, so the word can get out in your life. God said, let our light so shine before men that they might see the good works and glorify our Father, right? We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. So as we let our light shine before him, and then those little tests come, and then for the word's sake, Satan comes trying to, he's trying to throw you, get your mind off of it. Remember he said, if you keep, he, he that keep his mind stayed on the Lord, if we keep our mind stayed on the Lord, he said he will keep us in perfect peace. Perfect peace. But you got to go back to the word. You got to stay. You can't sit down and lay on that couch and just, I mean, I don't want other two ain't going to hurt. It's okay. But look, a dozen at one time? A gallon of ice cream at one time? And, you can, and then you go like, honey, I don't feel good. Well, Duh. <laughs> you got a reason why it's not feeling good, right? Balance yourself. Control yourself. Breakthrough is coming, God says. And God says, I said, well, how do you come back this, Lord? To keep, because the enemy coming for the word's sake. He said, put on the whole arm of God. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. I believe it's verse, uh, I believe that's verse 10. 
Let me go those there. Vision, Ephesians the sixth side, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes, the tricks of the devil. Okay? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You want to see, you know, to see somebody, a person, maybe on the job or wherever, and that person might snare at you, look at you, have a, uh, you don't know what that person's going, you don't know what's on their mind. You know what kind of day they're having, okay? But you automatically want to retaliate. No, 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 you got to be careful. Huh? God said, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. It's not that woman or not that man, not that boss, okay? He said, we are wrestling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. So God says, therefore, or wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. That's how you come back against it when the enemy comes. For the word's sake, put on armor. What is he saying? Get in the word of God and do what he says. Don't just hear, but be doers of the word, okay? Do it with all your heart. Do it with all your heart and just do it. Breakthrough is coming. Man, it's coming in. And God's watching to see if you can handle it or not because it can throw you. It can throw you, okay? It can become your guard. And we don't want to do that. Anyway, okay, we hope you uh, had enough here. So it's just a few things to share. It's so much here, we can't get to it all right now. But anyway, the, the word of God is assured. It will stand. It stand. Bless my mind. She was singing the song God gave her this morning, the new song there. May the Lord bless my mind today. Wow. Do you hear that? May the Lord open doors for me. He's the one who watches over me. May the Lord bless my mind. May the Lord heal my body today. May the Lord guide my steps today. He wants to let him. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. In Romans, the 10th chapter, he says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart again, not your blood pump, not your blood pump, but your spirit, your heart, down in your being, if you believe it with all you got, just that God had raised him, that is Jesus, from the dead, he said, you shall be saved. You shall be saved. He didn't stutter with it. He didn't play with it. He told you simply, it's not by works. You ain't working for it. Now, in the beginning of my salvation, I was working, man, trying to figure out this thing. How to go. I don't feel it, Lord. I don't feel it. See, it wasn't the feelings, but Satan was tricking me with the feelings. It was the faith, just trusting in what he said in his word. He said, just confess and believe. Jesus done told you. God done told you in his word. Believe it in your heart that God have raised his son Jesus from the dead and confess it with your mouth. That's simple. He said, you say. He writes your name into the Lamb Book of Life. Old things begin to come new. Old things will pass away. Behold, all things are new, become new. But even that, Satan will try to trick you and say, well then if you saved, then why come you, why come you did this and doing that? And you just slip back into this, slip back in. How many know habit after 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of habit, it becomes habit, doesn't it? Now you have to be, Romans 12 chapter say, be transformed by renewing the mind. You gotta be transformed, the flesh, but your spirit is saved. You're a new creation, amen? Now get in the word, feed on it. Praise him and just thank him, just love him. Just, just oh, praise, I worship you. Now, I used to praise him and I'll be ashamed to praise him in public, you know. I wasn't used to that. People think I'm crazy, Lord. But oh, it come a time to like, God, I love you with all my heart. You've been so good to me. Now he's Lord. <laughs> Watch that door open. Amen. 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 Welcome to the kingdom of God. Now concerning our giving. Do this. He says here. 
Corinthian church. The Apostle Paul said to him in the ninth chapter of 1 Corinthians, in the verse 6, he said, But now this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he had given, had purpose in his heart. Again, that's not the blood pump, that's the spirit. What you, what you purpose in your heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound. You need grace abound to you. It's not that you are paying for it when we tithe to get. We're just being obedient and to give God an opportunity to open the door for you. Okay? You go through a little task, but if you can stay with it and you just stand, I mean, I know he told me back in the 90s uh, of, of what I was to do and, and the, the amount to give, okay? Because each one may be, he may tell you something different because we're in New Testament day. They 10% back in the Old Testament, New Testament now, Jesus says, you are tired. Yes, you ought to do that and not to let the other go, but to just do what he said. And he told me $1 for every five. He said, shouldn't you give that? And I'm like, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I was looking at it as a loss. And I realized, God Almighty, the Father of the universe, the, my Lord and my God has spoken, who own everything. Somebody says it was crazy. On a cattle on a thousand hills, more than a thousand. <laughs> he told me what to do. To give him an opportunity to pour out to me grace. To bless me. To open the windows of heaven. I said, God, forgive me. And I committed to it. My wife and I, we came back in the night. We committed to it. And he said, now God is able to make. He'll make grace abound towards you. You don't have a grace for that? He'll make it abound to you, all right? That you always have sufficiency in all things and that you may be able to abound to every good work. Now, that's telling me you'll have resources, okay? You have the gift, okay? Remember to Abraham? He said, the Lord God made me a blessing to be a blessing. So when he blessed and he opened that door, we have to get an understanding. It's not so I can hoard it up on myself and pack the bank and fill it up and now I got millions and millions and millions and millions in the bank and I ain't helping nobody. No, no. It's to listen to him. What is he telling you to do? He says, give. And it will be given that. Jesus is responsible for that. To give him back. Amen. Well, I hope you got something for this. And Father, we come before you. We ask your blessings, God, upon those of the given that we brought our tithe and offer before you again this day. God, I release my faith with your people, God. Lord, that they might receive, God, 30, 60, even a hundredfold of their giving in the name of Jesus for that which they're going. They will learn and realize that this is not a loss, but this is a gain because of being obedient. For God Almighty, you are not a man that you should lie. Neither the son of man that you should repent. If you have spoken it and you said it, it will, it's good. It will come to pass. Thank you for it. We believe that and we receive it. Bless these, your people, and strengthen them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right. We hope you got something out of this. <clears throat> and may the Lord bless you until we meet together again. Amen, amen. Now, do we have